for that. I'm going to minister today on the subject, uh, continuing on the Queen of Sheba, and today I'm going to talk about her visit with the king. And so I'm going to read uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 9. It's a very lengthy story, so I'm not going to read it all, but I'm going to read verses 1 and 2, verse 9, and then verse 12 to capture the epitus of what I want to communicate. Now, when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to Jerusalem to test Solomon with hard questions. That really means with riddles, things that are impossible for most people to understand. Having a very great retinue, that means like a, a huge amount of people came with her. A lot of dignitaries, a lot of, of things and people came. She came with a, with a whole horde of people and, and, and gifts and, and camels that bore spices, gold in abundance, and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing too difficult for Solomon that he could not explain to her. And so now down to verse 9. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold, spices in great abundance, and precious stones. There never were any spices such as those the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Now King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all she desired whatsoever she asked, now listen to this, much more than she had brought to the king. Amen. Let's pray and ask God to bless this word. Thank you, Lord, for your people, for this opportunity to share your word and to share your love. I pray, Lord, in these next few moments for your presence, God, not only to enable this preacher, but also to stir our hearts. Let our hearts be good fertile soil this morning and let the word go deep and and lord just let us be encouraged and god touch your people lord one plants and one waters but you give the increase i'm i'm asking for increase in the lives of your people today for those that are here for those that are on facebook live we just pray your blessing of increase in jesus name and the church agreed by saying amen, amen. i want to begin with a very brief recap from last week's message. We talked about spiritual desire last week and basically how the Queen of Sheba, she traveled from the ends of the earth. She didn't come from across town. She came from the very ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. We know from uh, looking at the geography that this would be modern day Yemen, uh, some people say maybe perhaps Saudi Arabia. And, and so she journeyed some 1,500 miles to hear his wisdom. And not only that, but it would take three months each way. She, if you will, put out six months of her life to accomplish this journey. And so what we understand from the main premise of that message was that her desire to visit Solomon was so great that she made huge sacrifices in order to accomplish that. And, 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 and she didn't quit. She didn't give up. And so in the New Testament, Jesus uses her as an example of spiritual desire while he's teaching in the New Testament. And what he says is the queen of south shall rise up in judgment against this generation. But she came from the ends of the earth to hear wisdom and behold Amen, the king of kings, the greater than Solomon is here. And what he's saying is that he wants his people to have a desire for him like the queen of Sheba had a desire to go and to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And in that message, we cried out to God, said, God, please stir our desire, fill us with fresh desire. And, and I just talked about three things. We need a desire to seek him. Sometimes we face circumstances in our life. We come up against obstacles, things we don't have answers for. And we need to be able to be a people that learn and know how to seek after God. Because God is the only answer in so many of these situations. We need to seek God for his wisdom. For the scripture says, by wisdom a house is built. And I don't know about you, but I don't know how to do it all. Amen. I, I didn't know how to raise these kids of ours. And I, I didn't even know what I was doing. But somehow, God, amen, they all turned out wonderful. Amen. 
and, and, and so God helped me. And then, then also a desire not only for his wisdom, because uh, I don't want to make decisions on my own. I don't know what the outcome of those decisions will, but God does. And when we pray for wisdom and ask God, he says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask. God says, I'll give it. If we will pray, God will give us the ability to make better decisions. Also, a desire to please him. And that was a very interesting thought because in that desire to please him, I talked about how God's the potter and we're the clay. And how God in his generous love and mercy, he's always working with us, being patient with us. But even though he's loving and patient, he's still molding us. He's still shaping us. He doesn't let us stay the same. He wants us to become more Christ-like. He wants us to grow and to develop. And in that process, he molds us and shapes us. He preaches his word to us. He, he stirs our hearts. But unless there is a desire in our heart to please him, all that shaping and molding that God's wanting to do in our lives, it won't be fruitful because when he begins to mold and shape, to remove this out of our lives or to, or to change our direction a little bit, unless there is a desire, a, a foundational desire that I want to live my life to please God, then all that molding and shaping, it won't be fruitful like God wants it to be. So we prayed, said, God, please give us a desire in our hearts to please you. And now today I want to talk about the Queen of Sheba. And I'm going to talk about five things. Hopefully I won't be here all day. But she came to the king is my first point. She came. Secondly, she poured her heart out to the king. Thirdly, she came to learn from the king. Fourthly, she came bringing gifts to the king. And fifthly, she received much more than what she gave to the king. Went away with a whole lot more. How many of you know you always go away with more, amen, when you give something to the Lord? And so first of all, she came to the king. And in this thought, I want to communicate how her desire didn't just stay a thought in her heart or in her mind. She didn't just think about going to hear the wisdom of Solomon, but her desire translated or somehow she was able to turn that into action. And that is a bridge, amen, that we all need to learn how to cross that bridge, the bridge that connects desire with action, which will take us, amen, to the dream, to the result that we need. I have a, a simple math question for us today. Uh, five frogs are sitting on a log. Four of the frogs decide to jump off. How many frogs are still left on the log? Did you answer one? Well... That's not right. The correct answer is still five. This is because there's a difference between deciding to jump and actually jumping off the log. Amen. Now, <laughs> I know it's getting hot in here already. Amen. I knew this would be a, a weird mess. No, amen. I know I should one of these days. I have a friend that kept saying, man, I'm going to get in shape, man. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm gonna, he was saying that all through high school. I saw him 20 years later. He was still saying the same thing. <laughs> Amen. I remember a little plaque that I made in, 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 uh, when I first got saved. I was pretty radically changed. So I had a lot of zeal but not a lot of wisdom. And, and I made this plaque. It said, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And so... But today I thought, since I'm older and wiser, I'll tone it down. And this is what I said. The road to disaster or the road to failure, the road to mediocrity is paved with good intentions. The road to anywhere bad is paved with good intentions. So I've come today to encourage us, amen, not to give up. We get on that bridge. Sometimes we fall down. Sometimes we go back. But not to give up, to stay strong, to keep on trying, to keep on moving forward, and don't allow the struggle of amen of translating desire into action frustrate you where you just want to settle amen get out your camping tent camp and get comfortable there no God wants to help us today and God wants to tell us get up and climb the mountain get up and go another way and keep on moving up that mountain and so can you imagine that the cost or the difficulty of this trip for her. And, and she didn't let the cost or the difficulty keep her from it. 
Imagine what obstacles her friends would have. How many of you have any friends? Man, that is just so far to go. I don't think you should try that. It would take so long. It would be so expensive. You're a crazy girl. You're going to extremes. Have you ever had anyone tell you that about how you serve the Lord? Amen. And the reality is, is that she didn't let any of those prevent her. And so my cry today, God, help us to become people of action. Now, it's going to get hot in the kitchen right here for just a moment. I wonder what areas of our lives we're thinking about right now. And I'm just wondering, amen, don't worry, we're not going to flash them up on the screen. You're okay. Take a deep breath, amen. I need to lose weight. I need to pay off those bills, credit cards. Amen. Some of us say we need to finish that room I started painting a year ago. Amen. Amen. I, I need to declutter my house. Oh my gosh, haven't we been saying that for years? Amen. But how about spiritual desire? I need to read my Bible more. Or I need to be a better listener. Have you heard this Chinese proverb? The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is right now. Amen. I love that. Listen to this. One average idea put into action is far more valuable than 20 genius ideas that are not acted upon. So here's the closing on this point one. She came. Just simply, she came. She did it. She, she took that, that desire and translated it into action. Amen. If you will, she got up off the couch and she went for it. And so she loaded the camels, got going, and I want to encourage to be doers, amen. Let's be doers, let's be people that even though we've been knocked down, even though it's been hard, let's get up and be doers and keep going in the right direction God has for our lives, amen. And point number two is she came and poured her heart out to the king. I love this. Because she didn't come and, and just say some flowery prayer that she, amen, had remembered from her heart from being a child. But it says she communed with the king with all that was in her heart. In other words, she came to the king and she bore her heart to the king. She wasn't going to allow this trip with the expense, the time to get over there, amen, and just let him know a part of what was in her heart. She went to that expense and traveled that far. She was going to lay the whole enchilada out before the king. And she was going to get answers to her hard and difficult questions in her life. Amen. Now, here's the point. Our prayers must be real with God. Reminds me of the wife who prayed and said, Oh, dear God, don't let my husband be home when all those online orders show up at the house. Amen. I say that. Now, that's not the best prayer, but that's a real prayer. Amen? And we don't have to say the best prayers. We have to say the real prayers. Prayers that come from the heart. And so, the kind of conversations that God wants are real prayers from the heart. You know, we have people in our lives, and, and if you're like me, and I think I'm like everyone else, we have some people we share just a little bit of information with. Then we have others that we share a little bit more information with. Then we have some real close people, and we'll share what, maybe 90, 85, 90% with. But there are very few people we share 100% with. Almost would say probably zero, amen. Now maybe you do, maybe you do a better job than me, but God says that's not what I want. I don't want 90%, I don't want 80%. I want you to come and pour your heart out to me, says the Lord. I want to be your confidant. I want you to tell me how you're feeling. I want you to tell me what's going on in your life. How many of you know God is omniscient? What that means, God knows everything about everything. God knows it all anyways. And God knows when we try to communicate with him like we do with other people. And God says, when you talk with me, tell me all about it. Call me up. Tell me what you need. Pour out your heart to me. God says he's looking for people that will pour their hearts out to God. Remember, Elijah was so discouraged. Elijah was, said, I want to die. But what happened? God restored him. But you know what happened before he was restored? He poured his heart out to God. 
And it wasn't until after he poured his heart out to God that he heard the still small voice and God restored him. Can I tell you, God says, tell me all about it. I, I want our prayers to be heartfelt, to be real. I, I want us to be able to commune with God uh, with all that's in our hearts. David said in Psalms 142.1, I cry out to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord, I make my supplications. I pour out my complaint before him. I declare before him my trouble. You know, one of my favorite ones, though, is Hannah. Remember Hannah? She's found in 1 Samuel chapter 1. And, and Hannah was barren, but her husband, Elkanah, had another wife called Penna. And old Penna had children, but Hannah didn't. And so instead of fighting the battle with Penna and getting all worked up, uh, getting, you know, uh, all this acid indigestion, lack of sleep, and all this stress going, she went to the source. She went right to her God, and she cried out to God and said, God, you see my heartache. She wept sore, the Bible says, and she told God all about what was going on in her life, and finally said, Lord, if you give me a man child, I'll give him back to you. And you know what happened after that? That prayer, when she poured her heart out to God, God healed her womb and gave her a, a boy named Samuel. Samuel turned the whole nation back towards God. But not only that, guess what happened next? God gave her four more children. Amen. God heard her cry. God was gracious. So not only do we need to pour our hearts out to God, but number three, she came wanting to learn from God or from, or from the, the, the king. How many of you know learning is a lifelong venture? Hopefully you never get tired of learning. I'm over 50 now. <laughs> and the other day, Brian, Pastor Brian and I were in the, we're re, we're, by the way, we're remodeling our food pantry. You should see how nice, we're gonna show you some pictures. That thing's looking so nice now. Pastor Brian's done most of all the work. He's had some people come and help him. But I got in there, so how, what can I do to help you, Pastor Brian? And I think he was thinking, oh, gosh, here we go. And, and so he gave me some receptacles. Here, put these electrical receptacles in. So I had done it before, and I just did it by taking the old one out, looking exactly where the How can you mess up, right? So I was going to do it that way. And so I pulled all the wires off, and I forgot where they were. I said, Brian, does it matter where these wires go on this thing? And, and he comes over there and says, here, let me show you. And he says, remember, black on brass. And I looked at the switch. One side had brass on it. The other side was silver. Black on brass. Man, I've never known that in my entire life. I learned that. And he said, and you strip it just this far, and you let gravity be your friend. He turned it upside down. That little washer thing that holds the wire in place came down. Wire went right in, tied it up. And, and I w went away so happy because I learned something new that day. And the thing is, is that this queen came wanting to hear the wisdom of Solomon and learn something new. You see, we're never too old to learn. It feels good. Can I tell you what Proverbs 1 and 20 says? It says this, out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. What God is saying is that if we will open our eyes and pay attention to what's going on around us, that wisdom is all around us. We can learn from anyone, anything, anytime. And, and, and so God wants us to learn. So if you park your car in the wrong place and you come back, there's a parking ticket on it. Amen. Now you've just learned where not to park your car next time. Amen. Amen. We can learn from every single experience. Yesterday we were driving over to my brother's in town to his hotel. We went down Ocean Street. And there was this poor guy out there and he was on the street corner. And usually, you know, you, you, sometimes you see people that, he, he looked like maybe his mind was drug ravished. I mean, he, the poor guy was in bad shape. And, and usually you see him standing or sometimes you see walking and talking it's, you're not sure who they're talking to, but this fella was very unique in that he got a lazy boy chair. And he set it right there at Caddy Corner, so every car coming by, and he was just there going like that. And, and, and I looked at that and I said, oh my God, have mercy on that man, Lord. And, but what it showed, you know what I learned from that? I learned this. 
That's somebody's son. That's somebody's family member. And you know what happened? I imagine, I don't know what happened, what brought him to this point, but maybe he says, you know what, I'm just going to try one, one little tab of acid, or maybe I'm just going to take some psychedelic mushrooms one time. Or, and, and someone told me you could try heroin just one time and be addicted. And, and, and what I learned by looking and seeing this, I, I learned young people, if you're here today, yeah, I, I know some of us have already tried drugs, but you know what? Don't take it the first time. Say no. Stay away from it. Because you don't know where that will lead. And another thing I learned is, but for the grace of God, I don't know about you, but I've done some drugs. And guess what? That could have been me out there, but for the grace of God. And I learned I need to pray for them. And it learned me to, to be thankful to God. So you can learn from anyone, anytime, anywhere. And so this is what John Maxwell says. He says, you could live for 30 years and just be 30 years older, but not any wiser. And what he said is this, is that each day when we go to bed, we should take a few minutes and we should stop and reflect on that day's experiences. Because if we don't reflect on the experiences we go through, then we're not going to be able to learn what God wants to teach us and what we need to learn. And so let's take some time. Let's reflect. She came wanting to learn. And so I pray today we would have a heart that wants to learn, that we would say, Holy Spirit, be my train. Amen. Not be my train. Be my, my teacher. The train is, I learned something new about my beautiful wife just the other day. Been married over 30 years. I knew her dad worked for Union Pacific. And that we saw the train stuff all around. We have a very unique, probably from the 1950s, Union Pacific coffee, uh, what do they call those, thermos there at the house. Some really nice relics. But one thing I never knew is that she would get on the train with him and take the train down to Mojave where he worked and camp out in a little trailer that the Union Pacific provided for them. And so I learned something new every day. And I just want to encourage you, be hungry to learn. She came wanting to learn. That's why these small groups are so awesome because we come and we learn from one another. I'll tell you, I've never had so much fun because I listen more than I talk in those small groups. And the, the wisdom and the, the insight and the different perspectives has enriched my life. And, and so never be, amen, uh, uh, afraid to learn. Listen to what Proverbs 1 and 5 says. Let the wise hear and increase in learning and the one who understands obtain guidance. Proverbs 9, 9. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be wiser. Teach a righteous man and he will increase in learning. Proverbs 10, 17. Whoever heeds instruction is on the path to life, but he who rejects reproof leads others astray. John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Now this verse right here got me. Listen to this. Psalms 143, 10. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. How many of you know that in order to do God's will, we need to be taught? We need to be teachable. God, teach us to do. You're not going to automatically, after living in the world for many years, just and living in this culture, just automatically start doing God's will. God has to teach you. God has to train you. So we need to be people that are teachable and are hungry to learn. And I pray that would be you, that you want to grow. And so the Queen of Sheba, she came to learn from Solomon. And so number four, she came bringing gifts. So not only did she act on her desire, she poured her heart out to the king, she came ready to learn, and now she came bringing gifts to the king. I want to tell you, this lady was really, really wise. She came bringing gifts. And whenever we enter the presence of a king, amen, we should come and not be empty-handed. It is appropriate to bring gifts to the king, something of value. In 1 Kings 10 and 10, it says that she brought 120 talents of pure gold. I did the math on that. Do you know what kind of gift that was in today's valuation? Guess what? $270 million. And in addition to that, she brought spices that were not obtainable anywhere else. Spices you couldn't just go out to buy. 
And then she also brought precious stones. And, and so she brought substantial gifts to the king. And I believe this is an example of how we are to enter into God's presence. Because he's not only a king, he's the king of all kings. He's the Lord of all lords. So I want to give him gold, I want to give him spices, and I want to give him precious stones. Gold represents our best gift. Spices represents giving him what no one else can give him. And if you will, precious stone represents our affection. So this is what I say. Lord, I want to give you my best worship. That's my best gift. God, you don't have anything God needs, okay, other than your heart and your worship. You, you, you can't impress God. If you drove in today and you're driving a new Tesla, hallelujah, I might say, man, that is so cool. But I'll tell you, God's not impressed. <laughs> you may have come in today in a brand new Mercedes. Well, what, what do I, a brand new lifted 4x4, four four, you know. Guess what? Man, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to drool over that, especially if you have a nice boat hooked to the back of it. I go, wow, man, that's great. But guess what? God's not going to do no somersaults or jump up and down and start clapping his hands. You know why? Because you know what, what, what God claps his hands and starts jumping up is when we did like we did today. Thank you, Pastor Christy, for leading us in the team in worship today. That was... Amen. That was so beautiful. And, and that's what brings us into the presence of the Lord. And when we talk about giving him the spices, that which no one else can give, what do you have that nobody else can give God? And that would be your life and your will. In other words, you're surrendering and saying, not my will be done, but your will be done, and giving my life to God. That's something nobody but you can give to God. And I encourage you today, God loves you so much. He's poured out so much mercy and so much grace. I encourage you today to give him the very best you have, and that's giving him your life. She came bringing gifts, and you don't have anything valuable in your house, no bank account amount, nothing you have material-wise will can really you know, make God go well. But if you give him your best worship, and you surrender your life to him, and you, man, I'm telling you, it, God says there's a party goes on in heaven every time somebody gives their heart to the Lord. God will get up and start clapping, amen. I can't say he'll do somersaults because I haven't seen that in the scripture. But God will get excited, amen. So lastly now, she came bringing gifts. But number five, she left with more than what she came with. And we really need to understand this. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. And sometimes when we invest and we put, pour ourselves in, we want to see instant results. And I just want to tell you, you may not see instant results, but every time you pour something into God and you bring something to God, regardless of what that is, you're going to go away with more than whatever. Do you think you can outgive God? That's not going to happen. And whatever we give to God, she gave $270 million dollars worth of pure gold she gave her best to the king but it says the king when she left gave her more she might have left with three billion dollars i don't know the king gave her much more than what she came with when she left we will never outgive the king and and, and i just want to say i remember what my life was like when i was 26 years old I would messed it up pretty good already, wasn't going in a good direction. I drank way too much, amen, and, and more than that, but I'm not going to say anything, amen. And, 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 and really, when I look at that life I had at, at 26, I'd say it's like an old abused and beat up piece of furniture already at 26. <laughs> what? Uh, and, and I came to an altar, though, and I said, God, I give my life to you. I ask you to just come into my life. And then two years later, wow, my life was so different. Before, my business was struggling. My relationships weren't that good. I had other things going on. Two years later, man, I've got a good wifey. Amen. And she's still right here with me today. Thank you, sweetheart. And, and, and a wife that was, is good to me, a wife that loves me. I didn't drink, drink no more. I sang the song, no, 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 I don't smoke it no more. 
tired of waking up on the floor. No, didn't, didn't need none of that no more. No. And, and, and God began to do a work in my life. This is what it says. It says that she came and when she, when she brought her gifts, first of all, she got an audience with the king. And I don't know about you, but I want an audience with the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I want to move into his presence because there's fullness of joy. And as I move into his presence, not only that, I want to hear his wisdom. I, I want what God has for me. And she brought, if you will, her best gifts. But guess what it says? It says this. It says that when she had an audience with the king and saw everything there, she saw things she had never seen before. When you bring gifts to the king, you're going to see things you've never seen before. But if you truly give him your whole life, give him your best, he's going to show you things that you have Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. <laughs> Jeremiah 33, 3. Amen. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. And when we bring gifts to the Lord, we're going to be able not only to have an encounter with Christ and have our lives changed, but... It says that when she saw this, it says it took her breath away. And that's the best way to describe what happened when I had an encounter. When I gave him that old broken up life, you know what happened to me? He touched me with his Holy Spirit. And you know what I had? I had an experience that took my breath away. And sometimes I'll be driving my car and the Holy Spirit will come in there and you, you know me, I can't sing, but man, when that happens, I can sing. Amen. And I just begin to sing out out of key. I don't care. Nobody's in the car to look at me and go, oh. And, and I just begin to sing to the Lord. And, and, and he just takes my breath away sometimes. Sometimes I'll just start dancing around in circles in joy because he's been so good to me. Amen. Sitting here in the worship today, I, my heart was, I, I begin to weep when I, when, like Brian, and Brian gets up and talks right about it. I remember being in this church 20 years ago and, and no, hardly no music in the church, a little piano with broken ivory playing uh, the key of C only and just, and, and then listening to this, I say, God, you're so good, you're so faithful. And, 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 and none of that I could have done. And, and let's remember where we've come from. Let's remember, you may not have a lot, but remember where you came from. You're alive. You're alive. God's been good to all of us. But you got to walk by faith. We put a quarter in, we pull the thing, we want to hit the jackpot. It doesn't happen like that. You bring your best gifts to the Lord by faith. And in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And God wants us to know that he'll be a debtor to no man. And if we will give our all to God, amen, God will bless us. The life I have now being a pastor and all that. Listen to this, Proverbs 19, 17. If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord and he will repay you. Now I'm going to use this illustration, even though you've heard it before. If you've been in the church, you've heard this several times. But in Bible school, there was people, all of us students, we were called starving students. And, and we all were, we made homemade tortillas and beans and rice. I mean, we were starving students. But there was some people there, and Naomi and I would go over there. We were secret Santas. We would put bags of groceries on their porch at their apartment. And we did that now and then. They would call up and say, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know where that came from, we'd say. But they, they knew, they knew, 20 years later, this little men's house right here, it never looked that nice before. But that little men's house right there, they had a guy living in it when I came to this church, and his son was selling dope out of that house. But the income of the church then, I remember, I counted it up. The tie that I were $3,200 a month. And so I couldn't just throw him out and keep the church doors open. But finally I said, God, I'm going to do this by faith because that ain't right having that in your house. 
and we gave them notice and I figured it would cost about seven thousand dollars to turn that thing over and we just started to scratch the surface and we ran out of money I said oh my lord I'm not a contractor I I don't know how to figure this stuff out we get a phone call from a couple we went to Bible from a couple we went to Bible school with pastor do you have anything that you need finances for at the church and I said we just so happen to be in the middle of a remodel to get our men's home established we're turning it into a men's home and he says well I want to send you something so a couple weeks later he calls up we have an overnight coming tomorrow and Naomi and I are here working at the church FedEx shows up I grab her we came over and got on our knees in the office and said honey let's just pray for us we prayed we opened it up there was a check for $30,000 And do you know what it cost to do the house? $27,000. That's how far off I was. Sold a few bags of groceries and reaped $30,000 to redo our men's home. You'll never, ever give something to God without getting more back. Get your seatbelts on. Listen to Malachi 3 and 10. Giving to your church. Bring all the tithes. Tithes is 10% of our income into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple that's the church if you do if you do says the lord of heaven's armies i will open the windows of heaven for you i will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to take it in and then he says try it put me to the test you'll never listen I know living in Santa Cruz is so expensive and it's so hard. That's why I, I'm not a high pressure guy. I don't come in here and say, you need to give your tithe. You need to pay. I don't do that because I know the struggle we're in. But can I just tell you, I challenge you. You will never ever end up with less by tithing to the Lord. God will bless you. God will multiply. And some of us... We've been in a, recover, in, in a recovery mode. Our lives were messed up. And when you're an addict, you're, you're all tight-fisted. And it's, it, it's all about what you can do to supply your habits. So once you get saved, sometimes opening that fist up is a little tough. But I want to encourage you. If you want to reestablish your life and you want God's blessing on what you're doing, amen, learn how to tithe to the Lord. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Hannah, she got back four children, gave one, got back four. Listen to Proverbs eleven twenty four. 24. I, I don't know, is this the one Brian quoted earlier? It's pretty close. Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. Uh, th th that's not me, that's the word of the Lord. Will you listen to this? Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. Her breath was taken away and she left with much more than $270 million. And can I tell you, when we give, bring our gifts to the king, we're going to leave and it may not be $270 million, but guess what? You're going to have peace and health to sleep at night. You're going to have help getting the car that doesn't break down next month, hopefully, you know. You're going to get, God's, God's going to step in and you're going to get back so much more. Amen. Anything that we give, we're going to receive more in return. And so, we don't know what it was. Amen. But she gave that money. Well, I'll give you this, Solomon, if you give me something. No. She just gave the gifts freely by faith. And because she did it with a right heart and a pure heart, that's what God says, I love a cheerful giver. Amen, give. I remember taking groceries to my grandma. That lady knew how to pray. She lived with her daughter, and her daughter would take her social security check and spend her money. And this is my adopted grandma. And, and spend her money so she wouldn't have food in the house. And so she was 70-something. She's a widow. And, and, and she would pray, and guess what would happen? I would just be driving down the street, and I'd get, mm, take groceries to Grandma. I'd go get groceries, I'd go over there, and when I'm pulling up, there's another car leaving, I walk in, here's a bunch of bags of groceries someone brought right before me. I mean, she knew how to pray in groceries, amen. And, and, and so, 
when God stirs your heart to give, please, please, it's because he has something better that he wants to give you. And so I'm done. She came. God, help us to cross that bridge from desire to action. Help us to pour our hearts out to really, I wish we could all really just learn to be open and transparent with our God and not flowery, oh dear God, up there in heaven. You know, I'm, I'm thankful for uh, all of us today, but I want you to have an ability to share your heart with God. He wants to be your confidant. And she poured out her heart. She came, she wanted to learn, help us to learn, came bringing gifts. She left with more than what she gave. Amen. Would you stand with me all across the building? Give me a minute to pray before we are dismissed. Please, we just want to take a few minutes and, and take this word before the Lord. Father, we love you today. Thank you for your people. Thank you for their hunger, their attentiveness today. Lord, I just pray this word will have blessed your church. God, that you will speak to them and bring life to them. That, Lord, you would just right now open heaven on our hearts. Lord, I pray right now for those here that may not be in a right relationship with you. And I just want to, Lord, ask you to minister to their heart. Holy Spirit, stir them right now. And if you're here today and you'd say, Pastor, my relationship with the Lord is not what it needs to be. I need to surrender my life to God. I want to say, Jesus, I dedicate or rededicate my life to you. Jesus, would you be willing to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior? Man, he's going to jump up and down and clout and be so happy for that choice. Because that's something you can give him that nobody else can give him. Only you can give him your heart. Some of us here at church today, we've already been in the way a while. What we need to do is we need to take that further and say, Lord, I've already surrendered my life, but I want to surrender more of my will. I want to surrender more of me to you. Help me to learn. Help me to grow, Lord. And so if you're here and you say, Pastor, today I want to dedicate or rededicate my life to Christ, would you just say, pray for me, Pastor? Lift your hand up right now and say, pray for me, Pastor. Thank you for your hands. Thank you so, so much. I see your hands today. Thank you for your honesty. We have some uh, people here today that are uh, willing to pray for you on our prayer team. Would, what, could, could I get you to do what we've all done at one time or another? Those of you that raised your hands, would you come down here and just allow us to say a prayer with you today? We just want to say a prayer of dedication to the Lord. We want to ask God to, to bless you to come into your life. And so as they come today... Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap of praise today. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. As they're there praying, I'm going to lead us all in a prayer. Those of you that have come to dedicate your life to Christ, would you say this prayer with me here today? That's how we invite Christ in, is through prayer. Say, dear Jesus, help me, church. I invite you into my life. To be my Lord, to be my Savior, please forgive me of all of my sins. Be the Lord of my life. Give me power and strength to live for you. Change my heart. Change my desires. Make me a man or woman of God. I give it all to you, Jesus. Now let's just continue to pray. Those of you that came down, continue to pray. If we 